Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 177, Marry You. The days seemed to be especially calm but whether there were some schemes lurking under the calmness, no one actually knew. These days in the residence of Prince Ding, everyone felt themselves imperiled, especially the few valued aides under Fu Ziyu Yi and things were done even more cautiously. It was not because of anything but a few days back Fu Ziyu Yi sent his most valued Pei Lang to the prisons. No one was actually clear of the details but those who knew about it revealed slightly that T was because Pei Lang was a spy that Fu Ziyu Yi's opponent had sent over. Before this, no one could deny Pei Lang's talent and even though everyone was jealous that Fu Ziyu Yi's treatment of him, Pei Lang had resolved a number of problems for Fu Ziyu Yi in the past two years. Fu Ziyu Yi just capture him like this and even if one had yet to verify it was true or not, just the night before the arrest, Pei Lang was even drinking tea and playing chess with Fu Ziyu Yi with an appearance of a monarch and his subject in harmony. If Fu Ziyu Yi suddenly have some clues, he would definitely investigate if it was true or not, otherwise he would be accusing injustice and innocence and permanently damaging a confidant's heart. For Fu Ziyu Yi to make such a decisive decision, it only showed that he had long been suspicious of Pei Lang and even with such doubts he could still put on such appearance of closeness. This Prince Ding was not a simple person. Be it if it was killing the chicken to scare the monkeys or not, the aides were much more respectful when facing Fu Ziyu Yi again. However Fu Ziyu Yi's heart was not as soothing as what others had thought. He too had some doubts. He had sent people to monitor the princess residence and finally learned that Princess Strong Zin actually disguised herself went to the residence of the Count of Pinnan to look for Su Ming Feng. Even though one did not know what they were talking about or what was Princess Strong Zin's purpose, Fu Ziyu Yi thought that there was somewhat strange about it. Princess Rong Zin dwelled in deep seclusion and rarely came out that she even did not have close relations with Emperor Wen Hu. If there was, it would be having good relations with the late Princess Yu King in the early years. However Princess Yu King had been dead for many years and it was Princess Yu King's son, Zi Jing Xing who was close to Princess Rong Zin but Zi Jingxing died two years back in the battlefield in northern Zhang. There were no other relations between the residents of the Count of Pinnan and Princess Rong Zin. Fu Ziyu Yi had racked his brains to think about the relationship between Princess Rong Zin and the residents of the Count of Pinnan but it was a pity that there were no viable clues. Moreover what made Fu Ziyu Yi puzzled was that why did Princess Rong Zin not look for the Count of Pinnan, Su Yu? but instead looked for Su Ming Feng alone. Su Ming Feng had long been out of the official dim and would not be of any help in it was for official matters and if it was for personal matters, how would Su Ming Feng know Princess Rong Zin privately? Just as Fu Ziyu Yi was mumbling Su Ming Feng's name, he was suddenly startled. Su Ming Feng was well known to many people in Ding capital and it was not only because he was outstanding and talented or because just as he was about to enter officialdom he had a serious illness that there was no choice but to give up on the route of an official but because he was Zi Jing Xing's playmate since young. Many people were puzzled as Su Ming Feng was an upright youth so how would he always be mixed with Zi Jing Xing? who always trifling around without respect. Since the residents of the Marquis of Linen and the residents of the Count of Pinnan were long friends, there was nothing wrong with having good relations. It was as if he had found a clue as Fu Ziyu Yi's thoughts were finally broken through. Su Ming Feng was Zi Jing Xing playmate and Princess Rong Zin was Zi Jing Xing's Yi Mu. If Princess Rong Zin looked for Su Ming Feng privately, it was most likely that they were discussing about Zi Jing Xing. But wasn't Zi Jing Xing dead? Then why would Princess Rong Zin suddenly inquired about a dead person? If it was last time, everyone would not speak anything of Zi Jing Xing in front of Princess Rong Zin, fearing that it would touch of Princess Rong Zin's painful matter. So why would Princess Rong Zin take the initiative to ask? Could it be that Zi Jing Xing was not dead? Fu Ziyu Yi jumped in shock with his guess but he quickly denied it. He had personally read the secret report on Zi Jing Xing's death so it would not be wrong. Moreover under the eyes of the public, 
How would one steal a rafter and replaced it with a column? This was impossible, but one was obviously following Princess Rongs in to investigate Prince Ru I so how would it suddenly be Su Ming Feng and even involve the dead Xi Jing Xing? If it was so then the matter had become complicated but also more interesting. Fu Ziyu Yi stood up and thought for a while before instructing the people beside him. To the underground prison. There was an underground prison in the residence of Prince Ting that was built in the courtyard of the Ancestral Hall. The Imperial Ancestral Hall was not here so the Ancestral Hall that was built in the Prince residence were just a place to pray to Buddha and implore for blessings. On the wall a painting of amiable looking Goddess of Mercy was hung and when one lift the painting up, one would be able to see a little laughing Buddha statue. Upon pressing the wooden fish at the foot of the laughing Buddha, the stone wall would open up and following the route that the stone wall opened up, it would lead to the underground prison of the residence of Prince Sting. This underground prison was the place where spies or Prince Sting's subordinates who had committed great wrongs. Normal death was not an enough punishment for these people and there were endless kinds of torture thus it would be filled with a bloody scent when one enter. The stone walls were covered in a thin leather-like things and if one take a closer look at it, one would deasser that it was a skin of someone who had died and was hung out to dry. It still had the extremely pained expression on it that would make one shudder with one look. Outside it was a ancestral hall imploring blessings but inside it was like the shady business of the devil. Under the eyes of the goddess of mercy. This was was however like the 18th level of hell or even more terrifying than the 18th level of hell. Fu Ziyu Yi walked in with a leisurely look and his eyes were even filled with appreciation as his gaze landed on the human skin on the walls. The subordinate beside led the way inside and only stopped when he reached right to the end. The person who was locked inside the cell was hanging from the beam and the entire body was soaked in blood. The robes were stained in fresh red color and one could almost not see the original color of it. Because the body was hanging, there would be blood dripping from time to time, forming a small pool of blood. Fu Ziyu Yi quietly looked at the person. That person seemed to have fainted thus he gave a look at the person beside and the person immediately brought a bucket of chilly water and poured it over the person. That person quivered and one's body could not help but tremble. The pain seemed to be indescribable and it was like one was suffering a great torture. Fu Ziyu Yi smiled and went forward, is gentlemen used to it? When the chilly water pierced the wounds, it had also cleaned up the blood traces on the prisoner's face and what revealed was a clear and prideful face. It was Pei Lang. Pei Lang smiled gently and replied in a trembling voice, thanks to your highness's blessings. One live rather well. One had long knew that gentleman is not an ordinary person but one did not expect that not one is exceptional talented. The unflinching righteousness is something that one admired. Else how would the Shen family dispatch one over? Fu Ziyu Yi sighed. Everyone said that the army that Shen Xin raised are all heroes. Gentleman is a scholar but one's bones are also this hard. This prince really want to know how does General Shen teach others. Pei Lang took a breath and smiled. This one have no relationship with General Shen at all. It has already been a few days but gentleman is still persistent. Fu Ziyu Yi said. Even though this unflinching righteousness is commendable, it is a headache as it made one prepare some unusual games to play with gentlemen. Pei Lang only laugh and did not speak. Fu Ziyu Yi looked at him and his tone was very amiable, as if he still had some nostalgia, as this prince had a master-servant relations. It was actually enjoyable. You have great talents and this prince appreciated it. This prince's heart is naturally soft and is also willing to give you a chance. After atoning for one's crime, it will be like nothing had happened and this prince and you will be like in the past. This prince will still call you gentlemen and you are still this prince most capable think tank. He leaned closer to Pei Lang and spoke with a somewhat coaxing and enticing tone. As long as you tell this prince what kind of secrets does the Shen family has and what is the purpose of sending you over to this prince's side. Two sentences in exchange for an opportunity. How about it? Pei Lang coughed twice and coughed out two lumps of blood before smiling with great difficulty. 
Many thanks for your highness's great fondness but this official has nothing to do with the Shen family and cannot answer your highness question. Most probably it is God that did not give this official an opportunity. What a pity. Fu Ziyi looked at him expressionless. After a long while he then smiled lightly and patted his hands to brush away the blood traces on his body. Gentlemen's bones are hard and this prince respects it a lot and is also very curious. Wondering till when would gentlemen's bones would be hard till. He waved at the people by his side, this thing does not enter gentlemen's eyes and cannot be used fully. Change to a better one. Afterwards he stepped back and was about to leave before he suddenly thought of something, even though gentlemen did not speak about it. This prince will still be able to discover the secrets of the Shen family. However this prince wants to ask gentlemen. One heard that the Shen family value relations and righteousness and for gentlemen offer one's life in sacrifice for one's master. One do not know if General Shen would send someone to save gentlemen from the fire pits. He left with the guards. After Fu Ziyu Yi left. Pei Liang vomited a large mouthful of blood. This seemingly gentle and the very most scheming prince actually had such a vicious and violent side. The question that Fu Ziyu Yi asked Pei Liang made him smile bitter uncontrollably. It was not false that the Shen family people valued relations and righteousness but the person he was working for was Shen Miao. Shen Miao valued relations and righteousness but it was towards the Shen family. Other than her family and friends. One feared that everyone else was not in one bit important to Shen Miao. As to saving him, like what Fu Ziyu Yi said, Pei Liang thought that it would not happen. Not mentioning that Shen Miao did not have this ability to fish a person out of the residence of Prince Ding, much less from the most secretive underground prison. At the beginning when Shen Miao wanted him to be a hidden chess piece by Fu Ziyu Yi, he had expected such a day to come. Shen Miao knew that once Fu Ziyu Yi discovered it, Pei Liang's ending would be very miserable but she still did it. Despite logical reasoning that Shen Miao would not come and save him, Pei Liang had a small faint trace of expectation in his heart. He did not know what kind of feeling he had for Shen Miao. In the beginning when Shen Miao used Liu Ying to threaten him, he felt some disgust in his heart as he hated the feeling of being not in control and threatened. Afterwards one did not know why but he actually thought himself as Shen Miao's people. He would worry for Shen Miao and did his best to be a chess piece. Pei Liang was unable to understand his actions. He was thinking that most likely he had owed Shen Miao something in his past life and thus in this lifetime. He would spin as she wishes and even his life was changed. The guard that was responsible to torture him came over and Pei Liang threw away the thoughts in his mind and started another round of torture. What he did not know is that in the residence of Prince Ruai, Huo Long and Yi Ying was sitting at the tree eating melon seeds. Yi Ying asked, Boss Ji and Gentleman J are still not let out till now. How long are they guarding the tower prison for? Huo Long spit out a mouthful of melon seed shells. I guess that Master had forgotten about the matter. These days Master had been running outside so how would he have the heart to worry about others? One heard that there was a letter from the palace of Great Liang so probably Master wants to finish these matter and return to the palace. It is correct to say as such but if Boss Ji keep on staying in the tower prison, then would the information from Feng's Yan Pawn Shop delay matters? Huo Long rolled his eyes at Yi Ying. Feng's Yan Pawn Shop is to earn money and naturally there would be people from Mo Yu Army that will be reporting intelligence to Master so how would matters be delayed? When Yi Ying heard it, she felt that her companion made sense. It is also true. Why bother with so many matters? There were some things in the world were a freak combination of factors. Some things only need a little change in order for the entire trajectory of things to change. In the study of Feng's Yan Pawn Shop, there were stacks of thick letters on the table and it was covered with dust as there was no one tidying up. On the bottom of the stack, there was a letter with three words written on it. Residence of Prince Ding. There were some movements in the residence of Prince Ding, much less the residence of the Crown Prince. Emperor Wen Hua had the heart to give the Crown Prince a favor and let the Crown Prince and Huang Fu Hao have good relations. Thus Huang Fu Hao strut proudly into the residence of the Crown Prince. 
Instead of secretly fearing that others would discover, it was just that what was discussing in the residence of the Crown Prince was not something that Emperor Wen Hua was able to manage. The Crown Prince poured some wine for Huang Fu Hao and smiled. How does brother Huang Fu find the words that this prince just spoken? Huang Fu Hao smiled and did not agree or disagree to it. You really calculate it very well and let this prince be the bad person in it and leave a good name for oneself and even carry a beauty back. The crown prince was not annoyed as he also smiled. A gentleman is always read to help others attain their aims. This prince is happy to see 5th Shen young lady becoming your Ken country's crown prince consort but everyone knows that it is impossible. The Emperor of Qin was not magnanimous enough to let another country's official's daughter be married to his crown prince. The crown prince consort title not only represented a female but also represent the power of the female's family and it would be best if it could help the crown prince. Xin Miao, as a person from Mingqi, would not be able to help Huang Fu Hao and needless to say, Xin Xin would not be willing to watch on as his daughter married to Qin country. Huang Fu Hao shook his head. What is the rush? This prince did not say that one would snatch another's preference but. He looked towards the crown prince, this prince is not one who liked to do good deeds, moreover it is using one's name to do good deeds and in the future when General Shen hates this prince, it would be difficult for this prince. The crown prince smiled when he heard it. This Huang Fu Hao was also a person who understood things so he realized the interests in the matter. Reputation in Mingqi was something that was useless and moreover it was not a big thing for Shen Miao to marry over. It was just a sentence that could let Emperor Wen Hu and the crown prince feel that they owed Huang Fu Hao. So what was there against it? Of course how would this good turn be exchanged for? Emperor Wen Hua had no knowledge of it and this matter was solely the crown prince's idea so one had to see how important this marriage was in the heart of the crown prince. What kind of difficulty does brother Huang Fu have? The crown prince asked in smiles. It is not a big matter, it would only make you laugh. Huang Fu Hao sighed and gave a worrying look. Even though I am the crown prince of Ken country but every family has its fair share of problems, much less this prince. Imperial father treats this prince extremely well but the few brothers this prince has are not to be spared of worrying. If there was a day where these brothers fight with this prince, he looked at the crown prince meaningfully. At that time, one hoped that one would be able to be a powerful force of this prince. The crown prince was first startled before he started scolding Huang Fu Hao in his heart. Fighting for the heir apparent was something that every country would have, especially in a country where there were a number of princes. However what Huang Fu Hao proposed was that if one day in Huang Fu Hao's fight for the heir apparent in Qin's imperial family, the crown prince must help him. How could a crown prince of Mingqi help the crown prince of Qin country? It was to lend him military power. Huang Fu Hao indeed calculated it well. Huang Fu Hao saw his hesitation and smiled. What are you hesitating about? Isn't the matter that this prince is helping you on just the same? The crown prince looked at Huang Fu Hao without speaking. If it was successful this time and Shen Miao was married to him, then the Shen family would be tied to his crown prince residence. With the Shen family's helping hand, the power of the crown prince would only increase greatly and it would become an important role in tea battle of the heir apparently. Currently Huang Fu Hao helping him with it, wasn't it also helping him in the fight for the heir apparent? Like this, the conditions that Huang Fu Hao set became not so unacceptable. After all, he would have more to gain in this matter. The crown prince's heart firmed up. Alright, since brother Huang Fu draw a sword and render help this time, in the future this prince would definitely not stand by and watch. Huang Fu Hao only laughed then and after drinking a few more rounds with the crown prince, he said, you really want to marry Shen Miao? He looked at the suspicious expression of the crown prince and explained, at tribute banquet. This prince had seen that Shen Miao did not have a soft temperament. One feared that she have a very strong character instead. Are you so confident in taming her? What does it considered to? The crown prince waved his hands unconcernedly. No matter how strong one's temper is, she is still a female. As long as one is a female and married to another, 
that tempered would be put away, one don't hide it from you but in the beginning the crown prince consort also had a strong character when entering the eastern palace but now still subservient to one's every wishes, for females, as long as one spares some effort to coax, at the end they would be meek, just like cats. When Huang Fu Ha heard it, he no longer said anything but snorted somewhat disdainfully in his heart. Princess Mingan's death till now was still a mystery but Huang Fu Hao always felt that the matter was related to Shen Miao. Afterwards one did not know how the matter between him and Fu Ziyu Yi was used and now Fu Ziyu Yi had to deliberately keep a distance from him. The Shen family was not ordinary so there must be people behind Shen Miao who was guiding. Even though the crown prince's power was not weak. He might not necessarily be able to win when encountering Shen Miao. However these were irrelevant to Huang Fu Hao. He was only happy to watch the play thus after a few more laughs. He pick up the wine cup to drink with the crown prince. At the other end, in the residence of the minister of land, Shen Miao had actually replied to the invitation. It only said that Shen Miao had agreed to Shen Dongling's invitation to appreciate incense but she would also be bringing Luo Tan the Biao young lady of the Luo family, along. Wang Bai was happy when he saw Shen Miao's reply and said to Shen Dongling, didn't you not say that you sisters did not have much relation? One did not expect that she would actually agree to it. Shen Dongling was also somewhat surprised but she said with a smile on her face, it seemed that you have not seen for quite some time. Now there is only two of us sisters left from the residence. She took the reply from Wang Bai's hands before taking a closer look. In all fairness, Shen Dongling did not expect that Shen Miao would reply to the invitation and even agreed to come over to appreciate incense. Shen Dongling understood Shen Miao that it was impossible for Shen Miao to come due to her cautiousness. It was not very important for Shen Miao to come over to carry out the plans and she write the invitation to Shen Miao so as to prove it to Wang Bai that she had done her best for him and hoped that Wang Bai would think of her good points in the future. But who knew that Shen Miao actually actually agreed to it. Shen Dongling's thoughts turned. The reason Shen Miao brought Luo Tan was most probably because Luo Tan knew martial arts and would be rest assured with someone accompanying. Moreover Shen Miao would definitely bring lots of guards around to safeguard Shen Miao's safety. Since Shen Miao dared to come over, she must had made absolutely safe precautions. However Shen Dongling did not care about it at all because her purpose was not to scheme Shen Miao. Shen Dongling pushed Wang Bai, husband, since fifth younger sister agreed to come over, it would be easier for an excuse in the future. By calling the crown prince and Huang Fu Hao over, in the future one could say that Huang Fu Hao saw fifth younger sister during the appreciation of incense and fell for her beauty. Matters that came afterwards would be done much smoother. You females do think more thoughtfully. Wang Bai smiled and hugged Shen Dongling's shoulder. With such a wife, what more can this husband asks for? Shen Dongling smiled his teasing but her heart felt a different thing. Shen Miao had always been good at scheming others and Shen Dongling had seen the entire fight between Ren Wan Yun and Shen Miao. At the end of the Shen family, the eldest household was preserved and if one were to say who was powerful, it was Shen Miao and Shen Dongling. Shen Dongling also wanted to see between her and Shen Miao who was more powerful. To calculate Shen Miao into her schemes, was after all much more interesting than scheming Shen Yu. Shen Miao, who was being schemed by Shen Dongling, was playing chess with Zi Jingxing in the room. Zi Jingxing had a good set of chess skills as he stood firmly and fought steadily with Shen Miao. Each steps and plans were different. Zi Jingxing seemed to have long saw with a glance the plans for the, the pieces that she places and knew where she would move next then Zi Jingxing would block in the corresponding places. After playing for most of a shishan, one shishan equals two hours. Zi Jingxing had won a number of pieces against her but the battle was in a stalemate and it was difficult to tear it apart. In the past life Shen Miao practiced diligently on her chess skills in order to have conversations with Fu Ziyu Yi, thus not mentioning she was the first, she could at least be a difficult to beat adversary. However Zi Jingxing's moves could fight hand to hand and was like a nemesis. Since successfully learning chess, 
It was the first time Shen Miao wanted to withdraw a chess move. Seeing that Xi Jingxing eat up a few of her chess pieces again, Shen Miao said, Tired already, don't want to play, don't want to play or cannot play. Xi Jingxing said, Beg me and I will teach you. Shen Miao want to laugh in anger by his words. He came over in the middle of the night to look for someone to play chess with him and it was Shen Miao had a good temper as others would had chased Xi Jingxing out. She said, thank you, I don't need it. She did not plan to be a grandmaster of chess so what was the purpose of learning it? However it was a surprise for her in finding out that Xi Jingxing had such a high level of chess. Other than hearing that Xi Jingxing was exceptional in the battlefield, one had not heard other areas where he was particularly good at. However after some thinking about it, this person played the world in the palms of his hands so what did such small pieces of chess matter? She asked. Your people are all arranged for the matter two days later? Two days later it would be the day of the incense appreciation and it was the first time she and Xi Jingxing schemed others together. Once they schemed, it was for two crown princes. If this was spoken, it would make other feel somewhat cold. However Shen Miao did not think anything to it as she had experiences of a crown prince. To her the position of a crown prince was not a position that was too high to be implicated. Xi Jingxing also think so since his own older brother was temperer and the crown prince would be his nephew. So it seems that it was very suitable for her and Xi Jingxing to scheme against the two crown princes. Rest assured, there is no danger of anything going wrong. Xi Jingxing said, your horse carriage is also arranged. You really want to go? He frowned, it is possible for you not to go. Why not? Xin Miao said, even if I go or not, it does not matter to me. However I wish that they can do it with a little more grandiose. Shen Miao gently smiled, if I were to do, they would make the scene more realistic but at the end would only discover that everything is wrong. Isn't it more interesting? Xi Jingxing said with a smile but not a smile, so vicious. Is it vicious? Xin Miao asked. Vicious. He nodded his head and his eyes were shining like clear water and his thin lips hooked up, but I like it. Xin Miao. Ever since that night, Xi Jingxing's words had become even more frivolous but it was only with words as his behavior was still very respectful with her. Suddenly someone had squeezed into her life and that made Shen Miao unable to get used to it. However she had to admit that with Xi Jingxing's presence, a lot of things had become much easier. Apparently things that she would need to be troubled to accomplish would be resolved easily by Xi Jingxing. However if one were to continue to rely on it, it would still make one feel uneasy. Shen Miao had not yet learned how to trust another, much less trust a male. She had the courage and schemes for everything like usual but in the matters of romances between male and female, due to the heavy injuries she had sustained before, she was still as clumsy as the child when it happened again. Even if there was someone teaching gently, she was still slow and stupid. Xi Jingxing stared at her heedlessly and one did not know what she was thinking about. The chess pieces were just beside her hands as the young female sat gently and in a dignified pose. The lantern light that shone on her made her look soft and graceful, like a lotus that just bloomed. And his face was handsomely beautiful with dark pupils that were as deep as the night. It was like it was looking at the other party thoughtfully for a while before he suddenly smiled. When this matter is resolved, I will marry you Shen Zhao Zhao.